I'm back with another Freestyle Libre video. In this one I will show you how exactly I calibrate my Freestyle Libre to get better accuracy of my sensor readings. I will talk about a few things that you should consider before you decide to calibrate and I'll share with you a few tips that I learned that will help you calibrate your sensor right when you do it for the first time and don't mess up. Let's go! <laughs> Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tom. I've been type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel I help you navigate your diabetes journey. Guys, there is still a lot of you who complain about Libre being inaccurate. And hey, I just want to tell you that I totally feel your pain because some of the Libre sensors calibrated from the factory really give too low readings and you cannot fully rely on them. And that's why I decided to make this video and do a step-by-step -step walkthrough of a simple recalibration process that everyone can do at home. So let's get right into it. Just keep in mind I'm sharing my personal experience, this is not a medical advice and I'm not a medical professional. You should always consult your doctor or diabetes educator. So how does the calibration process work? Well the Freestyle Libre sensors are initially calibrated at the factory. But if they are giving you inaccurate readings, you can calibrate them at home using the actual blood sugar readings from your glucometer. And you can do it in various third-party apps and override the factory calibration in that respective app in which you calibrate. The apps you can use are for example Tomato, Xdrip Plus, Spike, or Diabox, uh, but you cannot do it in the Freestyle Libre Link app or on your reader. That is not possible and Abbott doesn't allow this. You will also need a third-party transmitter like Miao Miao or Bubble. And if you don't know what these are, just check the playlist here when I talk about them in detail. Guys, I want to share a few powerful calibration tips right now and I want to tell you that for most of them I got inspired by a guy called Diabetic Dad. And this guy has a pretty decent YouTube channel where he shares his diabetes experience and have also some tutorial videos and I will link his channel in the description below if if you want to check him out. So here are the tips. Tip number one is calibrate well. Because if you calibrate correctly you will make things much better and you will get more accurate readings. But if you calibrate incorrectly you will make things a lot worse. In other words it's important to do everything right. So focus and watch all the way to the end. Tip number two. Keep in mind that some glucometers can be up to 15 to 20 percent off from the actual blood sugar results you would get from a lab. So if you want the best calibration you need the best glucometer and I put two really good really accurate glucometers I found during independent research of what is available on the market right now I will put the two that I think are the best right now in the description below. Tip 3 follow the three golden rules of good calibration. When you calibrate you need to be leveled you need to be stable and you need to be in the ideal range. So the first rule is that you need to be leveled. But what the heck does this mean? Well you are leveled if the direction arrow on your Libre is horizontal and if your line has been flat for at least 15 minutes. But the longer the better. So if you can make it 30 minutes flat, great. This is because there is up to 15 minutes difference between the sensor reading taken from interstitial fluid and the glucometer reading that is taken directly from blood. So when you're calibrating your CGM, you're kind of traveling in time. And you want your blood sugar at the point in time when you calibrate to be the same as it was 15 minutes before the calibration. You want to respect this up to 15 minute lag. Second rule of calibration is that you need to be stable. I think I'm very emotionally unstable right now. So how do you know you are stable? Well ask yourself, will I be able to stay at the same blood sugar level that I am right now for another 15 minutes in the future respecting that 15 minute lag? If the answer is yes, then you are probably stable. And yes, you need to account for the lag not only 15 minutes before, but also 15 minutes after the calibration. If you have just been exercising, if you have just eaten something with uh, quick carbs, if you have some fast-acting insulin on board, 
then your blood sugar level will most likely change in the coming 15 minutes and you are most likely not stable. You should wait with the calibration until you are. So when you calibrate, don't eat, don't exercise and don't take insulin until 15 minutes after the calibration. The third rule is that you need to be in optimal range. It's really not a good idea to calibrate when you are too low or too high. Why? Because the CGM tends to be less accurate when you are out of the range and to calibrate well in those situations is very difficult. Not to mention that if you are too high or too low you probably are not leveled because you have been rising or you have been falling and you're probably also not stable because you will need to treat that high or treat that low with some insulin or quick carbs to treat it. So you really are not stable, not leveled when you are outside of the ideal range. Don't calibrate. These three golden rules of calibration are challenging and in the busy lives we all live it's really not so easy to find those perfect spots when you are leveled, stable and in range. But with some more sophisticated apps like Spike you can actually get alerted whenever it's a good time to calibrate. Tip number four. When you calibrate give it all you've got. Next you want to prick your finger and use your actual blood sugar to calibrate your glucometer. But wait! You want to do it like it's an Olympic event. Why? Because you want to make sure that this finger prick result that is used for calibration of your CGM app is as accurate as possible. So wash and rinse your hand, use a clean and dry towel and make sure that your testing strips are not expired. And if you have been using that Lancet to prick your finger for the past three years, get a new one. If you want your blood test result even more accurate, then you might take a few finger pricks from different fingers and average out those results. That might help you get rid of any outliers that would mess up your calibration. Tip number five, use an easy and user-friendly apps. As I said at the beginning, you will need a third-party transmitter. The one I'm using right now is Meow Meow 2. If you don't have a transmitter yet, I will put a link in the video description where you can get one. You certainly don't have to use my link, but if you get your Meow Meow using that link, you will get a $10 discount and you can support my channel. Once you have the transmitter, you will need an app for your phone. And if you are new to calibration, I would definitely not recommend to go with the most high-tech and the most complicated app that is out there. There are some great apps for tech-savvy users like Xdrip Plus or Spike, but if you are just getting started, I would probably go with something a lot easier and simpler like Tomato, which is the native app for Meow Meow. So if you combine Meow Meow and Tomato, it will be really user-friendly and really easy to follow. And you can find out more about setting up of Meow Meow 2 and Tomato app in the video I made and I will link it here and in the description below. To calibrate the reading in your Tomato app, you need to click calibrate in the top right corner and enter the blood glucose reading from your glucometer. The algorithm will process the information in a couple seconds and you should see the blood sugar adjust in your application right away. Tip six is don't calibrate the Libre sensor during the first day you have it on you. And that's because Libre sensors uh, tend to be less accurate during the first 24 hours. You only want to calibrate when your body gets used to the sensor and when your readings normalize. And that's typically starting on the second day of the sensor. Tip number seven, try to do a few accurate calibration at different levels within your ideal range. So let's say calibrate once when you are 4.5, once when you are 6.5 and once when you are 8.5 for example. And if you do this you will give the CGM app many more points of reference that it can use to calculate the calibrated blood sugar level. So the more points of reference you give, the better the app can calculate it. Tip number eight, never use information from another app that's using information of their own, like Libre Link app, for example. Don't put information from a Libre Link app to calibrate your sensor in the Tomato app because each application is using a different algorithm and if you use data or information not from your finger prick but from the Libre Link app then you will multiply the margin of error and you will mess things up. Tip number nine is don't calibrate too much. I usually calibrate max once a day 
and sometimes I only calibrate two or three times over the life of the sensor. I also don't calibrate when the difference between glucometer and the tomato app reading is within one millimole because this difference is so small that it doesn't really play any role and I will not change my treatment decision based on such a small difference. And honestly I can never be sure that my blood sugar will be stable for another 15 minutes after the calibration. It can go slightly up and slightly down and the more I calibrate the more likely it is that sooner or later I will make an error and I will mess things up. So when my readings in the app are more or less accurate within the one millimole difference I don't calibrate. Tip number 10 when you mess things up delete the calibration history. So if you calibrate inaccurately it might really throw off your readings quite a bit and you don't want that. If that happens you want to go back and you want to delete your calibration history. If you delete the calibration calibration history you can kind of reset any calibrations that you did in the past and you can start over. In the tomato app you can do it by going to settings and moving the clear the calibration toggle to the right. And it might take some time for the CGM app reading to get back to the initial levels. So don't rush, be patient, give it an hour or so and in an hour if you're stable, if you're leveled, if you're in a range you can start to calibrate again. This video was a really tough one to make. Took a lot of energy. I hope you like it. Guys, if you want to get more tips on how to improve your Libre sensor accuracy, click on the video here or click here to watch another video of mine. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and turn on notification so that you get a message whenever I release a new video. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next Type 1 Talks video. Ciao!